The most asked question among the new students who are about to enter the aviation industry is how to become an aircraft maintenance engineer. In this video, I will walk you through step by step how to become an aircraft maintenance engineer, what you will study, how long it takes, what license you need and how you can build your dream career in aviation. But first, a little introduction about me. I am Mohammad Ibrahim Khalil and I completed my 12th from Dhaka College, Bangladesh. Currently, uh, I am pursuing my YASA B1.1 at Thakur Institute of Aviation Technology at Mumbai in India, uh, which holds five civil aviation authority approvals, including the YASA and CAB, which is Civil Aviation Authority of Bangladesh. Uh, along with this, I am also pursuing my uh, BSc in Aeronautics Mechanical from Thakur Shamsa. Narayan Degree College which is affiliated with Mumbai University. First, let's understand what does an aircraft maintenance engineer do? An aircraft maintenance engineer ensures and certifies that the aircraft is airworthy and safe to fly. You can think of AMEs as the doctors of the aviation world. They ensure the health and the safety of the aircraft before every flight. Now, many students get confused between the aircraft maintenance engineering and the aeronautical engineering. While I will make a detailed video about the differences later, but in this video, I will strictly focus on aircraft maintenance engineering. What it is, what an aircraft maintenance engineer does and requirements and everything else you need to know. How can you become a licensed aircraft maintenance engineer? Where will you find jobs and the future career opportunities? in aircraft maintenance engineering. Also, last, should you choose this career path? So let's get started. Step 1. Understanding what an AME does. An aircraft maintenance engineer is responsible for inspecting, maintaining and certifying an aircraft to ensure that it is safe for flight. You become the final authority before the aircraft takes off. It's a job of precision, responsibility and trust. Without AMEs, planes simply can't fly. Step 2. Minimum eligibility requirements. Education. After completing your class 12th with physics, chemistry and mathematics, uh, you can join but some institutes also allow the students after 10th. But 12th with PCM is recommended because you must have the basic knowledge of those subjects. Uh, the BSc is not compulsory for AME but if you want to reach the top positions like chief engineer, director of engineering and the chief technical officer in airlines, uh, a degree like BSc will be necessary. Also so in case of age, you must be at least 16 to 17 years old to enroll. So to hold a license, you must be at least 18 years old. And to certify the aircraft, you need to be at least 21 years old. Also in case of medical fitness, you have to be medically fit with normal eyesight and hearing. Color blindness is not accepted because distinguishing colored equipment is critical in aviation. By the way, wearing the power glasses is acceptable if you have the normal color vision. Step 3. Choosing the right course and the license. Before enrolling, you have to understand just two key terms. So, part 147 and part 145. Part 147, uh, these are the aviation authority approved institutes uh, authorized to train you. Also, conduct the exams and issue the certificates of recognition. Uh, also, in case of part 145, they are just the approved maintenance organizations where the real aircraft maintenance and the repair work happens. Always, you have to choose a part 147 approved institute, whether it can be YASA or it can be your local civil aviation authority. Uh, for an example, in case of Bangladesh, it's Civil Aviation Authority of Bangladesh because only they can provide uh, the training and the necessary exams for an AME license. Your course will have about 50 to 60 percent theory and 40 to 50 percent practical, including at least 20 percent actual environment training. Uh, this is a course of 2400 hours, which should be completed within two years, depending on the institute to institute. Step 4 the modules and the exams. During the AME course, you will study different subjects and those are called modules like mathematics, aerodynamics, aviation legislation, turbine engines, electric and electronic fundamentals, etc. After each module, uh, you must have to pass the exams. The YASA standard is tough because you need a minimum 75% score in each and every single module to pass. Unlike the traditional universities where the experience starts after the graduation, but in YASA approved institutes or part 147, your practical training counts towards your work experience from the start. Also, there is an important update that is now all the YASA module exams are moving to a complete 
computer based system for the fair and the transparent evaluation if your documentation isn't proper your license application might be rejected so stay organized once you pass all the modules you will get a certificate of recognition which is essential for applying your ame license step 5 choosing the right category here the main license we are calling the father that is the b license family divided into the two main branches b1 and b2 b1 is the mechanical branch that we are calling the father and b1 license deals with the aircraft structure engine and the mechanical systems uh, b1.1 those engineers who will be getting the b1.1 license will be dealing with uh, aeroplanes with the turbine engines for an example the boeing 737 or airbus a320 uh, also b1.2 is there b1.2 deals with the uh, aeroplanes with the piston engines for an example the small training aircraft like cessna 172 in case of b1.3 helicopters with the turbine engines will be there for an example the big helicopters like seeker sky or the augusta etc uh, also in case of b1.4 helicopters with the piston engines for example the small helicopters like robinson r22 etc also we are saying b2 this is the avionics branch b2 license handles all the electronic and the electrical systems uh, also it's it has no subcategories for b2 for b2 license holder will be dealing with the radios navigation and the autopilots etc and also there are some other license categories like category a category a is for the basic maintenance license only simple part replacements and servicing tasks and also there is category c those who will have the category c license they can certify the full aircraft after the big maintenance checks or for the base maintenance for the category c you need to have a lot of experience a simple way to understand is category a for the small repair license category b1 is for the mechanical engineer like engines structure and b1.1 is for the big planes like jet engines category b1.2 is for the small planes for the piston engines category b1.3 is for the big helicopters like jet engines and category b1.4 is for the helicopters category b1.4 is basically for the small helicopters with the piston engines and category b2 is for the avionics engineer it's for the electronic and the instruments and category c we can say Category C license holder is a certifying officer after the full maintenance. Most students choose B1.1 or B2 because of the better career opportunities worldwide. Uh, choose the category based on your interest, mechanical or electrical system. Step 6. Practical training and experience. After clearing the exams, you will move on to the on-job training. You will work inside a part 145 approved organization performing the maintenance on the real aircraft. You need to complete tasks uh, across the multiple ATA chapters like engines, hydro leaks avionics landing gear and simple way to understand the air chapters are like the index of a huge aircraft manual each number like 22 21 23 etc will represent a different part of the system for example if someone says today we have the problem with ata 32 it means the landing gear problem that's it every task must be recorded in a logbook and signed by the supervisors step 7 getting licensed once you finish your modules practical training and gain enough experience you can apply for your yasa air maintenance license and you need to submit your completed application form uh, also it's called the form form 19 also proof of the past exams like module certificates experience logbook recommendation letter if needed also the passport suggest photographs passport or the id proof medical fitness certificate sometimes it required uh, like application fee received personal work experience validation previous license copy if applicable you have to submit those documents to the caa or naa so that they can check and verify those documents and if everything all right then they will issue your license also they will send it to your given id address so then you are the license engineer and later in some other video i will try to cover all about type training finally why you should choose the ame as a carrier uh, if you are the aviation lover airplanes and the fixing things and aircraft maintenance engineering is just an exciting and well-paid and respected career you will get the jobs faster the airlines always need the skilled workers uh, you can earn a good salary also you will have the opportunities to work abroad you will always be a part of the fascinating world of the aviation if you are passionate about the aviation amy can be your gateway to a bright and adventurous future thank you for watching and if you found this video helpful please make sure to like comment and subscribe for the more aviation related content